Yo, what up guys and welcome back to another one. Today, 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 me and Jordan are going out to sit some decoys for y'all. You guys have been requesting it a ton and I've been wanting to get out there and do it. It's just been so hot, but today it's not bad. It's like 80 degrees, the humidity's not at 90%, so I'm like, it's a good day to do it. But today's video is sponsored by Dive Bomb Decoys. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know I run Dive Bomb and Dive Bomb only. They're a great affordable decoy where you can go buy a ton and not break the bank. So big shout out to Dive Bomb for sponsoring this video and for always keeping the channel hooked up with some juicy, juicy decoys. <sighs> you ready to sit this thing today? Yeah. I'm actually kind of excited. It's been a while since I got to put stuff in the ground. I know, right? Yeah. It's like the season's coming around. We're all getting the it's. Jordan's like, dude, look, come on, man. Let's just go do this. Let's just go do this video. I want to set some decoys. And I'm like, all right, let's go. But today we got the Festiva. We're doing a little bit different. You think they're all going to fit in there? Well, I mean, how many is all, but <laughs> we're getting what, 30 dozen at least? In yeah. There? So we're going to try to fit pretty much, I think it's right at 30 dozen decoys. This is what we're sitting today. We got six bags of these bad boys right here. This is the Dive Bomb Canada Goose Silhouette, and uh, it's my go-to decoy. And it ought to be your guys' go-to decoy, to be quite honest. They're easy to set. It's fast. I preach about it. Uh, I did a lot of solo hunts, goose hunts, by myself, sitting 30 and 40 dozen of these bad boys. It doesn't take very long. Last year, I sat 20 dozen of these bad boys in 95-degree weather. And it only took me 20 minutes to get them up and 20 minutes to get them down by myself. So, today we're doing 30 to 40 dozen. And today we're going to show you how to sit spreads according to wind and what to change. How to move them decoys around maybe if the birds aren't working right or maybe the wind switches. Just basically give you my two cents on how to arrange these Canada Goose silhouettes. <laughs> Look at that. That's uh, that's pretty much 35 to 40 dozen right there. We just did a quick count. Six bags. Six bags. Uh, <laughs> I've been preaching about the old Festiva. The Festiva comes through, man. That's the hunter's little wagon right there. <laughs> Look at that. She ready to go, boys. Jordan was like, hey, man, you know the Festiva has stealth mode on them days you need to get in with <laughs> undercover, no noise. <laughs> that thing is like a goat cart, dude. <laughs> The old Festiva's a getter, dude. <laughs> Look at that. She ain't fun. fast, she ain't pretty, but she's fun. <laughs> yeah, ain't pretty, but she's fun, and she gets the job done, dude. Just stacks of decoys in the <laughs> back. But I want to tell you guys, if you guys want to pick up some dive bomb decoys, use code BOB10, B-O-B-10, to receive 10% off your purchase. I'll link all these decoys down in the description below. Go check them out if you've been looking for some new Canada Goose decoys, some new Snow Goose decoys, some new duck silhouettes. Oh, yeah. They got pigeons now, too. Oh, yeah, they're coming out with them pigeons, aren't I'm, they? I'm looking forward to using that. Uh-huh. But this code is only available for three days. So you got to make sure to buy your stuff within three days or this code will be gone. <laughs> Just getting it in the old Festiva, boy. <laughs> well, we made it in the old Festiva. Goodness, that was a rowdy ride, son. Uh, a little bit more than what I think she's used to, but oh well. <laughs> well, here we are. We are at a cut wheat field, and we got a lot of dew on the ground, so we ain't got to worry about the Festiva lighting the whole darn field on fire. So it's a good day to do it. <laughs> bring back old memories oh, yeah. <laughs> so what we're gonna do first y'all is we're gonna pull our bags out every time it doesn't matter if we have the trailer or the festiva what's nice about these dive bomb bags is just that they're nice you can saddle up with two of them and right there I'm taking out 10 dozen decoys right there what other brand of decoys are you gonna carry out 10 dozen by yourself in one trip in one trip But here we go, when you unload these decoys, that's what's nice. You can carry the bag out and you can place the bag right where you want it. Five dozen at a time. Always carry your bag out where you want the decoys. It makes it 10 times easier, 10 times faster, y'all. But I'm gonna go ahead and run a time lapse for y'all. Me and Jordan are gonna get to huffing and puffing, get this spread set. And then after it's up here, we'll grab the camera and I'll show you guys why we set it the way we did. 
One thing about these dive bombs, y'all, look at that. One hand, you can grab an absolute stack of them. Now, I do have the non-flocked and the flocked. See the difference in the head? So when you guys go pick up some decoys, that is the difference in non-flocked and flocked. Uh, there is a little price difference in them, obviously. I've had a lot of y'all ask me, hey, what do you prefer? And honestly, it's really whatever you can afford. The flock, to me, uh, they, just, they just look ridiculously good. See how fast them bad boys go up? Sorry. Oh, wait, time out. We need to time it. We started sitting these at like, it's 948 right now. We actually started sitting them at 9, yeah. let's just say 945. Oh boy, howdy, look what we did. <laughs> she big, boys. She's big. Look, we got our one snow goose decoy back there for confidence. Let's check the time though. We started at 9.45. It is 10.07. So you're looking at, what, 22, 23 minutes? Pretty much 20 minutes. Two guys. That right there is 30 to 35 dozen dive bomb Canada Goose silhouettes, y'all, right there. I mean, that was, uh, that went up in a hurry. Dude, I forgot how fast these spreads go up. It's so nice. Yeah. And I, it's really not that much different than when the ground's hard either. I mean, they just. Yeah, they go right they just, in. It's nice. That's what's real nice. Here in Kansas, we fight hard ground constantly. And uh, I will say, these are spring steel. These are made out of spring hardened steel. So the memory in these stakes, there is none. Check it out. Look. Boing. Yeah, they don't have any memory to them. So when you go and you jab them in the ground when it's frozen, they don't bend over on you and kink. Believe me, this last year I got to hunt with a couple other brands of silhouettes and they looked good and everything. Sure, they, they, whatever. But I will tell you what, the stake difference is insane. Dive bomb hit it on the head with these stakes. You can't have coat hangers out there, y'all, because the other ones, that's what they're like. So guys, I'm gonna describe the spread here for you. See this tree row? That's where we would be sitting, is right there. The wind would be going this way, and the birds would be decoying this way into the spread, right? So a lot of times, you know that we do a lot of A-frame hunts on tree rows, or fence lines, or maybe just brush piles along the edge of the field, maybe in the center of the field. This is our go-to spread for it. Here in Kansas, we hunt lessers. There's a bunch of lessers, the small geese, cacklers, you know, the small ones, not honkers. If you're from up north Minnesota area or anything where you're just hunting honker geese, your spread will not be set this tight, y'all. I mean, not at all. This 30 dozen that we have out here could actually be a lot, and I mean a lot bigger, 30, 35 dozen. That's what I'm guessing I have out right now. But like I said, that's where we would be sitting, and this is our kill hole right here. And as you can tell, I lightened it up. There's a small indention that curls back around, comes out, and then goes out the rest that way. Basically, their kill hole doesn't need to be a hole, but something like an indentation. That's what I like to describe it as. I don't have kill holes a lot of times. Basically, I just try to create an organic shape with the spread, and wherever I want the geese to land, into the wind, it's very important. That's where I'm just gonna leave it a little light. I'm gonna give them some room to land. I'm gonna bring some of my good looking flock decoys out here in the kill area. I'm gonna get some walkers, some upright walkers. As you can tell, we got some walkers in here. It looks like a little family group that just landed and they're walking into the rest of the spread. So kill holes, y'all. Be careful on sitting your kill holes. A lot of people can just get carried away. That, we need a kill hole, like a, like a actual hole or something. I used to be that guy, but now I've learned the more organic you can make it and where you think that they're gonna wanna land according to the wind, that's where you just make it nice and luscious for them. You make it look all tasty and you, and you sit your good looking ones out here and you make it look like a family just landed. You gotta be creative, y'all. Be creative. I mean, that's the thing with these decoy spreads. You can't really do anything too wrong doing them, especially when you just sit up a gargantuan spread like this. But I will say, when you have hard geese, pressured geese, especially late season geese, you're gonna wanna pull out some tricks that you know work, your go-to tactics. And this type of kill hole and this type of organic long spread, 
it seems to work here in Kansas for the lessers. Now for lessers, we're not gonna go spreading these out any more than they are. That's actually sitting pretty big than to what it's, we usually set them, isn't it? it? This is more like what one of our eight or 10 man spreads. It's, yeah. It's big. Yeah. We put a lot of room in these decoys and you can actually put more, especially if you're up north for the big birds. Ducks, it really doesn't matter. This spread right here would, would do some work on some ducks. If I was to be duck hunting with this spread, 30 dozen, uh, I would put two mojos basically right in there up front of the kill hole on remotes because you'll be in the A-frame. Turn them off when the geese are coming. Turn them on when you see ducks. And you can run this spread for ducks and geese in the field at any time. Uh, ducks eat this spread up. I'm telling you, this is my go-to spread. It's easy. It goes up fast. And whatever comes around is going to like it. Now, big tip that I had to learn over the last couple years is here in Kansas, we have lessers, and the snow geese travel with our lessers a ton. They intermingle, and they roost together a lot of nights. So that means they're feeding together a lot. Of you will see feeds with snow geese. Sometimes there's a bunch of snow geese, but a lot of times there's just some snow geese, maybe, maybe a dozen mingled in until we get after kind of mid-December, and then the snow geese are everywhere. But before that time, I like to sit out a few snow goose decoys, to be honest. Just like this one here, uh, if I would have scouted this field and I would have seen a dozen or maybe even 20 snow geese in it, I would uh, come over here to the edge, and that's what we're on. We're on the uh, right, we're on the right wing here, and I just sprinkle a few in right here, just off to one side. Again, making it look organic. When you guys scout fields, pay attention how them geese are sitting. Pay attention where the snows are sitting amongst all the other birds. It's important and you try to mimic that. Alrighty, so one more big thing I want to talk about when you're sitting spreads up against structure. And what I mean by structure is tree rows, indefinite, with tall trees. You gotta be careful getting your decoys too close to tall structure because waterfowl in general, they have peripheral vision, just like pigeons. So their, their thing is they're on guard all the time from predators. And where, where do predators lie? In tree rows. So, naturally speaking, geese never get closer than this. And this is right at 15, 20 yards. 15, 20 yards is what I like to keep it. So that's where we would be sitting, basically where we have the dive bomb bags, where Mr. Jordan just put them. And we got, you know, roughly 15 yards to the edge of the spread there. This distance is very important. So just like if you had a big structure, let's say a, let's say a tree limb pile, a burn pile that, that the farmer was gonna burn. Let's say you had lay down blinds in front of that or something, you brush them up. Same thing. You wanna have, if it's a structure, if it's a pivot, anything, you want to have your decoys at minimum 15 yards away from that structure. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's worked for us all the time. I don't know why I change it. Right. But, dude, you know, though, if if this was Wade spread, Wade would be going, push him back, get him farther away from the trees. <laughs> Wade, he doesn't like the decoys close to the trees at all because, like I said, we have hunted tree rows here in Kansas for so long, we found. If you have them too close and it's a fair weather day, it's different if you have a blizzard rolling in that morning or a crazy difference drop in temperature and them birds know that they are hungry they have to eat to survive that's a little different you can get away with a lot more stuff but this spread right here is my go-to anytime hard birds for hard birds late season birds or just birds that may i'm thinking maybe are weary you know what i mean on really cold weather days like i was saying you can get away with a lot more maybe you don't need as many decoys on really cold hard weather days because like i said when that weather hits them, boom, they go into instinct reactions. They gotta feed to survive. So guys, I wanna describe wind real quick. Let's say our north wind right here switches because the wind is going that way. That is a kill hole right in front of us up yonder. What if it switches? What if it switches out of the northwest and now it's blowing that way? Woo, that took all uh, seven minutes, but we moved it. So I'm back in the normal spot. This is where we're on the edge of the decoys, basically where the blind would be and we took a ton off the left side and what we did is we moved them over here and now what we have so the birds are going to want to come in this way and look what we did now we gave them a wall over here a nice big round wall to land into 
This is a go-to spread that I do when we're on side winds. On those days when you only have one hide and it's gonna end up being a left or right side wind, this is a spread that I do every single time. So now basically we're standing where they would be landing. They'd be coming from that way right up in here. So you can see the shape of it now. Now it's basically like a big hook, a big J, but this part up here where they're landing in two, that's the thick of it. That's where I always put my big solid thick wall where they wanna land. Wherever you move your decoys, just know where you want your birds to land. They should always land up against a big wall of decoys. Now you can see here, we got some space in these here decoys, and that's what you want. You wanna feather them out where they're gonna be landing in that kill hole. So if we're landing here, we can tell that we have geese that have landed and they're kind of walking in. It's a little thinner on the edge, you know what I mean? <laughs> we're sitting here gabbing, and Jordan's like, well, I wish I would have got some pictures before we moved the spread because yeah. it was really, really pretty. It was, it was textbook. It was exactly what I would want to remember to do. Right. It looks so nice. <laughs> That's what happens. Guys, 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 get used to sitting a spread. Have your go-to spread, you know what I mean? Mess around with it, keep making it better. But that's the thing is, when we originally set today's spread, it was gorgeous, it was perfect. And then we're like, oh, you know, the wind changed, we need to move decoys. Every time you move decoys, your spread isn't gonna look the same. It's not gonna be as pretty. Because when you originally set up a spread, it's the main idea, everybody's hands, all hands on deck, and you get it up. It's like your piece of artwork, you know what I mean? Now? It's a little messy, you know what I mean? And that's what happens every time. Every time we go to moving decoys, the more we move them, the more you're just like, God, why do we even touch it? But if the wind switches a bunch, this is exactly what I would tell you guys to do, because this is what I do. If you guys are interested in getting any of these Canada Goose silhouettes, you better hurry up, because most likely, that bomb gonna run out of these bad boys. So if you wanna use the 10% off code, Bob10, you need to get over there and you need to get it done. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh, no. That wasn't bad at all. It's a whole lot easier than setting full body. <laughs> yeah, way easier. Woo, we're both sweating like stuck pigs out here, boy. Gerstern! It's Woo! like it's Kansas or something. Yeah, it's almost like we're in Kansas or something with this humidity. <laughs> But guys, big shout out to Dive Bomb for sponsoring this video. Y'all know that uh, here lately, it's been bad with the demonetization on the channel. All the gun videos, the shotgun shooting videos. Heck, even the last video I uh, uploaded. Oh, the duck hunt. Yeah, the duck hunt. It, w it got demonetized for about 30 minutes and then they uh, redid it. But uh, big shout out to Dive Bomb yet again. And if you guys want to save some money on these Dive Bomb decoys, not only will I link them down in the description below, but use code B-O-B-10, Bob-10, for 10% off your entire order at checkout. But this code is only gonna be available for three days following this video. So today, two more days. So go use it while you can. Jordan, thanks for the help, brother. Anytime. I appreciate it. Not a problem at all. But thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for the view. Thank y'all for subscribing. Thank y'all for hitting that notification bell. I really appreciate all your guys' support, no matter how y'all are supporting me. Because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to be able to do be able to do this every day. But smash that thumbs up button if you like this video. And if you want us to do any other type of decoy spread, maybe some floater videos on water, all you got to do is drop a comment down below and let us know, and we'll do it. But again, thank y'all. Peace. <laughs> I've been getting laid back, baby. You should know that I don't need your criticism, pessimism. I've been keeping it on the DL. Got a girl that